So hello everyone. Um, I'm just waiting a little bit more for everyone to join. Um, just want to make sure that you guys have filled out the health questionnaire that you can find on Mexico Bariatric Center or type mexicobariatriccenter.com forward slash health dash questionnaire. So um, just select Dr. Louisiana Valenzuela if you haven't filled out one. If you have filled out a HQ prior to this, we could switch your surgeon to Dr. Valenzuela. And um, another requirement is to watch the webinar to the end, and that's, that qualifies you to enter our raffle for $2,000 off of surgery package, and uh, we will do that at the end of, the, of our presentation. Okay, so um, I'm going to get started here. Um, this is our um, pretty much monthly webinar online. And uh, we've been covering, mostly focusing on obesity and COVID-19 pandemic. What are the consequences of obesity when the pandemic hit? And um, so the, the subject has been collision of the two pandemics, COVID-19 and obesity. Uh, today, I have, um, my name is Ron Eli. I'm the CEO and founder of Mexico Bariatric Center, MBC. And I have a pleasure to have Dr. Louisiana Valenzuela. Uh, she's our uh, chief surgeon in Mexico, in Tijuana. And uh, we have a pleasure to have her uh, on our side here to go over our presentation. Again, please make sure you have filled out the HQ. If you haven't, go ahead and do so. Dr. Valenzuela should be surgeon of your choice for this raffle and you get qualified for $2,000 to enter in a raffle for $2,000 off a of package. Um, uh, we try to cover as much as we can on the questions that are frequently asked, um, but if we didn't get a chance or if we didn't touch on it or is a specific question you have, you can enter it in the Q&A tab on your screen, and we can answer it at the end of the presentation. Pretty much the topics that we are going to cover today is obesity and risks of being overweight. Um, we talk about the option of undergoing weight loss surgery in Mexico. And we talk about <clears throat> NBC and what is it that we're doing. And Dr. Valenzuela is going to cover all the bariatric surgery options. And after that, we are opening up for Q&A and we enter into our raffle at the end. So obesity is like blood pressure disease and everything else is a chronic disease and is affecting pretty much the whole world right now. Um, you know, the factors that are involved in being obese, genetics, the environment that you are exposed to. Of course, you know, we are bombarded by sugary drinks, fast food, so the increased nutrient content of food, lack of physical activity, the conveniences we have. Of course, you know, stress, comfort eating, stress eating, inadequate sleep, and 
not to mention all the drugs that can cause weight gain. When we, when we gain weight, our fat cells number are going up. And that's not the only thing happens. The structure of the fat cells also changes. Fat cells, what we call adipose tissues. If you look at the, um, the display I have on my right side of my screen, you see uh, obese adipose tissue on top and a lean adipose tissue. You see the size and the structure is different. So not only the number, the size changes, the structure changes. As a, as a result of the structural change, you get insensitive to insulin. That's diabetes type two. You get insensitive to leptin. You don't feel satisfied when you eat food. You, you don't respond to therapies and vaccination like you would if, if, uh, if you are lean. One of the ways to measure um, obesity is body mass index or BMI, which is a simple formula that you just put your, you input your weight and height and it gives you a number. Anything below 25 is considered normal. And between 25 and 30, that's when you start going to the overweight zone. And after 30, now you're in the obese. And after that, we, they call it morbidly obese and super obese. Of course, you know, everyone has a different shape. So this is just a general way of categorizing what is the cutoff. So obesity is impacting 40% of adults in the US alone. Of course, it comes with a major risk factors. I like to dis, um, show this little animation always because it shows um, that um, how the, when we gain weight, how it affects even from our breathing to our blood vessels, but this is a, this is a good display. So let me make sure my, okay, there you go. Look at this, our diaphragm is one of the major muscles that helps with breathing. Breathe in and the diaphragm contracts and the lungs expand to take in oxygen. But if you're obese, fat in the abdomen can push on the diaphragm, limiting how much air you take in. So that's a good way of displaying how the breathing gets affected. Um, let me go back. So um, other problems, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, diabetes type two, we mentioned, you know, you become insensitive to insulin and lung disease. Of course, um, other problems, the sleep apnea, certain type of cancers, impaired immune system, uh, chronic inflammation, blood clots, you name it, it comes as we gain weight. Um, COVID-19, coronavirus was a wake up call for all of us to show that if you're not healthy and we're not uh, fit, it would, would affect us even in a you know, more um, pronounced way. So, um, so what happens is the coronavirus, attaches itself to the fat cells and fat cells act like a reservoir for the coronavirus. So when you, when you have, when we have more fat cells, that means we have more, um, more ground for these to, to attach themselves and grow. So that's why it's more detrimental. This is the international uh, study that it showed 113% of 
you are more likely to hus get hospitalized if you have obesity problem. Overweight people also have 74% more likely to end up in the ICU and 48% likely to die. So that's that became like, like I said, it was more pronounced before we had all the underlying medical condition that came with obesity. Now COVID-19 came and even uh, made it worse. Of course, during the shutdowns and the pandemic we went through, that didn't help the obesity because we stayed home. We didn't have access to fresh food. Um, but now, you know, we are out of that. So we need to get back to a healthy lifestyle and lose weight and stay healthy. Um, one of the, of course, classical uh, way to lose weight is diet and exercise or taking medication. There are some new medications coming out that they are, um, you know, they're promoting it pretty good. Um, I actually going to let Dr. Vanzola later on talk about those um, those medications, but most of the time medications mess up with your men mental health and your brain. Um, bariatrics has a proven record of being a fast, quick, safe, and a long-term solution for people who are overweight and obese. I like to look at bariatric surgery like a magic. Um, what happens is when they cut your stomach on, or they touch your intestine, basically your body thermostat gets reset. And the body thermostat is basically the way that the brain and gut hormones interact. So I like these uh, three uh, figures on my right side of the screen when the first one shows a person who is who weighs 250 pounds at that weight this person's body is used to that kind of weight and what happens is the brain and the gut hormones interact and they're happy with where they are and they're normal where, where they are so if this person, let's say, goes on extensive diet and extensive exercise, and we're talking about boot camp kind of uh, exercise, um, and loses 75 pounds, the brain still wants to function around that 250 pounds because they still see you at that weight. So what's going to happen is going to resist by making you more hungry and lower your metabolism. Basically, the body wanna go back to where it was before. And that's why you, when you go diet, the first two weeks, first week or two weeks, you lose weight. And after that, it becomes harder because your body is resisting that. Now, the person in the green, however, went through bariatric surgery. The minute that person wakes up from the operation, the brain, the, the hormones, their interaction starts to function around the 175 pound. And that's why the person is not gonna get hungry as much and the metabolism goes up. Metabolism goes up, that means you lose weight fast and you, within a year or two, you get to the weight that you always want. So the question is, how do I get this life-saving, sa life-changing operation? Um, people in US are either uninsured or underinsured, or the insurance company doesn't cover their procedure. Um, and the prices are way up and it's hard to afford 
from, you know, paying out of pocket is very hard. So here comes medical tourism. Of course, you want to hook up with a company who has a good track record and in quality, and it creates a safe um, trip for you down to Mexico and bring you back. So that's where we come in, Mexico Bariatric Center. NBC is a US-based company. We almost, um, we actually gonna celebrate pretty soon our 10 year anniversary. And uh, basically is committed to helping patients by offering this life-changing procedure in Mexico at the most affordable prices. Like I said, well, myself, I've been in this industry since 2007, but NBC started 10 years ago. We've had over 18,000 successful weight loss procedures, and we are working at this time with seven top quality bariatric surgeons in Mexico. Our process is pretty straightforward and transparent. You fill out the health questionnaire, you get your approval from the surgeon that you most match or you, you choose. You pay the deposit and you are qualified to get uh, booked for the, for the procedure, for the date you want and is available. You arrange for your travel, whether you fly or you drive. You get your passport, you start your pre-op and you're on your way to a new life. Our packages are what we call all-inclusive, which means we have a standard package that's, that covers the surgeon fee, the hotel nights, the hospital nights, pre-op, post-op tests, medication, hospital fees, nutrition support, aftercare support, and transportation. And when you ask, when is a good time to do this? It's today. Today is the best time to go get scheduled and get on the schedule to go get this life-changing procedure. Coronavirus, um, made NBC even um, stronger. And um, because we had to come up with solutions to go around the virus and make our standards and our protocols better. And uh, we have been operational, you know, pretty much without interruption after COVID. Um, one of the benefits you get, of course, one of the many benefits we have, one of them is we have a support group, a couple of support groups. One of them is over 10,000 past, current, and future patients. You get to interact with patients from years ago, use their experience, use their um, knowledge of what is like to go through the procedure and going through the procedure with NBC, of course, um, and they share all their before and after pictures and their experience. So it's a huge support before as well as after. Of course, we have our patient advocates and our nutritionists present on the Facebook support group that's going to help you as well. Uh, talking about patient advocates, we have at this point four of our past patients actively every day supporting our um, our um, our future patients, holding their hands and helping them. Um, Judy, Rina, Kelly, and Sarita. Sarita is very active on the Facebook. We also have Megan, uh, her picture is not here. So we have about five of our past patients just, just being a patient advocate. 
actually they started a podcast recently. Sarita and Rina are doing a podcast. Um, like I said, um, it's very simple. Once you get on the calendar, you arrange for your uh, travel, whether you fly or you drive to San Diego, our, pay, our drivers are there to pick you up. These are the drivers that have over years, 10 years of experience dealing with picking up and dropping patients, um, our patients. So you're in safe hands. And um, like I mentioned, we have seven surgical teams that we work with. Dr. Miguel Montavo, um, Alejandro Gutierrez, Rodriguez Lopez, Jacqueline Osuna, and Jesus Seha. Of course, Dr. Luisiana Venezuela, which is present today. Um, one of the benefits of going to our, um, going through the surgery with us is the, first of all, is the, the range of procedures that we can offer. We can offer uh, low BMI, well, what we call low BMI is maybe 28, depends on your metabolic condition, all the way to 92 BMI. We can provide single incision gastric sleeve. Um, BMI of 65 for bypass. Uh, we can provide endoscopic as well as laparoscopic procedures like ESG, gastric balloon, sleeve, bypass, mini bypass, DS, CD. Um, so all the all difficult revisional procedures we offer. And what happens is we have a surgeon liaison, which is a bilingual medical uh, individual sitting and checking all the traffic of the health questionnaires going to different surgeons and making sure that um, the right surgeon gets connected with, with what is best for that patient. Uh, so it, it's a huge factor to have this kind of a mechanism to make sure you're getting the best procedure that it, uh, you, know, you qualify for. Um, one of the questions always asked is, what's the pre-op diet look like? Um, our nutritional program before and after has been set up with one of the best registered dietitians 10 years ago. And we have just um, perfected this program since then. And um, one of the... Um, Chart, the chart that you see is one of the customization we have done that um, pre-op diet really de depends on the BMI. If your BMI is less than 35, you only do a two-day clear liquid. And then from there, it goes up, as you see, to even eight weeks. Um, the pre-op diet is very important. And... Um, Basically, what you want to do is do the best you can because it would be easier on you and the surgeon to perform the procedure. Um, so we, you know, it's very simple. It's just a low calorie, um, low carb, high protein diet. Um, we use a private hospital at this point that are basically specialized in dealing with um, bariatric patients. And that's why we are so successful. Uh, we use Hyatt Place, Tijuana, and also um, Fairfield. It depends on the, um, you know, how much space they give us daily. So you can be in one of these hotels. You can relax the night before procedure and be ready for your procedure. We pick you up, take you to the hospital. Your companion stays in the hospital when you're in the, uh, 
I'm sorry, your companion stays in the hotel while you're in the hospital, but they do have free breakfast served to them and um, they can enjoy that stay in the hotel. Um, the surgery day is very simple. You get picked up, you get dropped off at the hospital and you meet with the surgeon. They talk to you before the procedure and they prepare you for the procedure. Um, you stay one, two, three nights in the hospital based on what procedure you receive. Um, they do the leak tests, they do, they do the pre-op test, post-op test, and um, you're ready to go back home. You, we, we bring you back to San Diego to fly back home. One of the reasons we've been so successful as far as low complication rate and high success rate is the surgeon's load management. We manage our surgeon's load every day and uh, we cap them, at, depends on the procedure and the surgeon, three to five surgeries per day. And uh, also, you know, our surgeons not working every day of the week or every week of the year. They get breaks. So they're refreshed to do the procedure. Um, our complication rate is less than 1%, which is far below what is published data in the US. So we talked about diet and exercise. So it's a large population that they try diet and exercise, smaller, population tries um, medication, and then it becomes the newer endoscopic procedures like gastric balloon and ESG. And then about, at least in US, 2% of patients um, qualify, one or 2 percent for bariatric surgery. Of course, that number can be, um, more, but again, the insurance companies don't like to provide this expensive procedure. Um, we talked about people coming from US. We have patients coming from all over the world and we have a lot of Canadians, for example, coming. Canada offers this procedure for, for at no charge, but some, um, provinces have a very high or very, you know, um, high demand and the wait list is, can be up to five years or more or less around that. So people opt to come down to Mexico. Now that the borders are more open, they come down to us to get the procedure. Um, I did touch base on all the procedures we offer before, and this is a list of them. As you see, laparoscopic surgeries, endoscopic surgeries, and uh, as you see, is a great um, many procedures we offer. Of course, the eligibility it is a little different among our surgeons, but this is a general guideline. For endoscopic procedures, you pretty much have to have lower BMI, you know, less than 40 to qualify. We also offer endoscopic bypass revision, which we call TOR, which we go endoscopically and um, tighten the pouch if it's, if it's um, stretched. Um, so I have Dr. Luisiana Valenzuela here with me. Um, she is a she's double certified surgeon, which means she's a general surgeon certified as well as bariatric and metabolic surgeon certified. There are only a handful of these surgeons in Mexico. Um, she actually has gone 
under the same procedure sleeve with MBC. And so she's not only a surgeon, she's also a patient. She knows what it's like to go through the procedure and, um, and she has changed her life and she looks great. Uh, she has done, this is all data, probably over 5,500 procedures easily. And she only does three surgeries per day. Um, I would let, I like to let Dr. Venezuela take over and uh, I would just change the slides here. Thank you so much, Dr. V, just go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Go ahead. Okay, Thank you. Hello, everyone. Well, uh, he didn't leave me anything to say. I, I'm kidding. But uh, I am here to answer all your questions about the procedure, any, any concern you have. Uh, I, I need to be clear and open and to your mind about this uh, surgery, this procedure, who is uh, more and more popular uh, day by day. And at the same, the same time, we have more and more experience uh, doing this. I, I am 10 years with the company. And uh, well, I can answer, I think, the 99% of your questions. So we have a lot uh, kind of surgery, like uh, Ron says, uh, the popular surgery and the most um, uh, popular right now is the sleep surgery, gastric sleep surgery. Uh, who is a, we uh, separate the surgeries for restrictive and malabsorptive surgery. So this is a restrictive surgery, surgeries, uh, surgery, and it's, uh, well, uh, could say uh, it's the safety procedure, is the most experienced uh, procedure in the hands of the most of the surgeons. And, uh, and have, have the same results, good results like the malabsorptive procedures uh, in very, very close to the bypass with 80 and 85% of the, of the successful rates and a lot of patients, 100% of the successful rates in, in the way loss. So we have here the uh, restrictive procedure and killing off the 80 to 80% 80 of the stomach, letting the just 20% uh, like a banana form to uh, reduce the, the lumen of the um, food and uh, lose weight uh, slowly but constantly. And uh, a year, you will have the uh, all the successful rate uh, um, results, uh, more or less, in eight to one year. But at the six months, um, you will see. You will see. Sorry, eight to eight months to to one year. But the, at the six uh, months after surgery, you will see the big big change. Maybe eighty percent of your weight loss. It will be at six to eight months after surgery. Um, it's uh, a part of the stomach who removed in this uh, kind of surgery is the fundus part, who is the ghrelin hormone who is there. It's one, just one, it's not all the, the sign out to the brain to say I am uh, satisfied or not. So the uh, hormone hungry says uh, is named like hunger, hung, uh, hormone of hungry is removed, but it's not the, just the one of the ways to say uh, uh, 
to the brain, I am uh, with hungry or not. But it's a one very, very important way uh, to say I am hungry I or I am empty, I am full. And we cut that part and you will have this um, extra um, benefit with the surgery because we are cutting that part, one of the signal to the brain to say, I am hungry, I am full, I am empty. And uh, it's one of the uh, ways that the sleep surgery works. Like Ron says, uh, we have uh, these uh, hormones, gut hormones um, in relation with, with the uh, bariatric surgery, who is not working in exercise and diet, just in exercise and diet, and it's working with bariatric surgery, and it's uh, known now uh, all the all the bariatric wall surgeons knows that the hormones, the gut hormones, uh, don't act to it in the diet and exercise, but act to it when you have a bariatric surgery. And it's the reason uh, we have improved, uh, a lot improved with the bariatric surgery. And when you do diet and exercise, it's very hard to lose weight and maintain that weight loss uh, long term because it's not including that hormones. Okay, so well, we have a, a, a lot kind of 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 specific surgeries: bypass, gastric sleeve, mini bypass, uh, seals, uh, a lot kind of of, of surgeries, uh, doing every every day. And I saw uh, some questions and always the patients ask some questions about what is the best surgery for me. It's a malabsorptive procedure. It's a restrictive, restrictive procedure. Well, everyone is an individual election for to take the, the, the correct surgery. I can say all this group it's going to have this kind of surgery. All this group is to bypass. Uh, we uh, check your health questionnaire and we uh, recommend the best for you. Depends what uh, issue you have. Uh, maybe uh, acid reflux, maybe you had a previous surgery, maybe you have diabetes. So depends what uh, disease or what problem are you having, we can recommend what uh, surgery is the best for you. And it's not just your issues, your BMI, your age, and of course, uh, your expectations about the surgery. The expectations are very important to, to me, to us, because you need to know this is a tool. The tool is um, uh, who, it's working by itself for a while, but you need to change and, and be uh, conscient that you need to change your habits and your diet need to be healthy to keep your weight loss because the tool it will work in uh, anyway. It the first the third year you will lose all your overweight and you will be healthy again. You will be in uh, good, good shape, but you need to care that um, that tool. Uh, long term and any kind of procedure, in a, even in malabsorption procedure, even in total switch, you can regenerate weight and uh, maybe seven, eight, 10 years if you start to eat uh, uh, not healthy food. So, well, the, the, 
the most of this presentation is to attract dudes, so it's to respond to your questions. And the bypass, it's um, a very, very good surgery, very good procedure to patients who had 35 BMI, a lot of reflux, diabetes, um, cholesterol, triglycerides problems, uh, sleep apnea. It's the most common we know that happen with the overweight, that kind of problems, cardiovascular problems. But we have a, a lot of other uh, problems who resolve with the, with the surgeries, uh, like uh, intracranial hypertension, the polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome, the migraine, um, some uh, rheumatoid problems because the overweight increased that problems and with the weight loss, you can improve that problems too. So it's not just the common problems like the diabetes, like all we know, it's uh, a lot of it's a big uh, problems who can um, improve and and reduce and resolve with the with the weight loss. Uh, like I said, the bus, the gastro bypass it's uh, a very good tool. It's a very good procedure when the patients have a severe uh, acid reflux. I like so much this procedure. Uh, the diabetes, the hypertension, uh, it's a, a very very good uh, procedure too. Um, it's uh, more or less the same results, successful rates like the sleep surgery, but we know it's a little more way long term, uh, maintain long term the, the, the results, and uh, is like I said, resolving immediately the uh, diabetes problem, the, the glucose uh, in, in your blood. It's it's like magic. Uh, in, in, it's not until you lose all the, the weight. It's almost immediately in the first month when you see the change with this procedure to resolve diabetes. So uh, um, you can put the, set, the next, please. Okay. I am I am doing right now um, a sleep procedure with uh, three incisions in some patients, uh, and this is uh, well an extra um, extra uh, benefit because the most of the surgeons uh, are doing four or five. Uh, incisions. So this is depends if you did a good pre-op um, diet, if you live very uh, small, if you don't have yet a hernia, then uh, I can do the, the, the three incisions for the patients. It's less scar, it's less scar tissue in, inside of the abdomen. It's of, of course, um, aesthetic is better. And I am, I am now, uh, I have maybe two years to reducing my uh, drain, drainage, my drain. It's uh, just in a few patients and special patients who had clots before and I need to use uh, blood thinners more than others or in case the patients are very uh, easy to bleeding. Uh, but I took the portion of the patients who are uh, getting drained uh, in, in my surgeries and it's maybe 15%, just 15 of my patients are getting um, a drain too. So that improved a lot in your recovery time in the, in, in, in the hospital, you can breathe better, you can walk better, you can move in better, the pain is less. So we have this uh, extra 
uh, no, improving uh, way to, to do the surgery because our experience give us the opportunity to reduce that, that kind of, of things to improve the recovery time for the patients. So, uh, well, you can see in all these diapositives, uh, what is the time with the sleep surgery after surgery? It's just two nights in the hospital. Sometimes, just sometimes the patients can leave at the next day if they are very, very well. Uh, for the bypass is at three nights uh, and the same. If they are perfect, they can leave at the second day instead of the third day. But that depends how is your recovery time. Um, well, we have another kind of, of procedure with the mini gastric bypass. It's the same like results of the bypass. And we know in the bariatric world, in all concerns, we know the mini bypass could have a, a little better improving uh, successful rate in the weight loss. And uh, uh, maybe if the bypass is 90%, the mini bypass could be the 95% of the uh, successful rates, success, successful success rates of the weight loss. But we have this extra, um, Contra maybe in the mini bypass, who is the uh, bilious reflux. We have a 15% of bilious reflux. With a good technique, it's going to be less than 5%. Uh, but uh, that is the uh, just the issue with the mini, maybe the bilious reflux. But by other way, it's a little, little more uh, way less. Uh, in patients who, who had um, more BMI could be a very, very good tool to maintain and, and lose all the overweight. It's a, a very good surgery too. Uh, the, the bypass is completely for patients who had acid reflux. I, I, I recommend the the full bypass to patients who have acid reflux. If you don't have problems with acid reflux, you have perfectly get your mini bypass. It's the same results, a little, little more, maybe 5% more with the mini to maintain your weight loss and uh, lose a little more weight. So- Can, can you explain, there are always uh, questions about what, what which one, which surgery is better for me, sleeve or bypass? Also, a lot of times they ask, if I have had a gastric sleeve before, what would be the best option for revision if I have not lost my weight all the way to my goal weight or if I regain my weight? What would be the best option after gastric sleeve? We we know now the mini bypass, it could be the best option to try to lose the most weight possible because we jump 2.5 meters of your intestine, of your small bowel, and put down your foot uh, with the mini bypass. But we need to be sure you are not having as reflux. If you are having acid reflux, the best option is the bypass because we need to prevent the pillage reflux, uh, not just the acid reflux. So we can't have bilis in, in our mouth, in, in our esophagus. So if you are having bad time with acid reflux and your previous surgery, uh, you need to get the bypass it will be a good results too, and is the option for this kind of patients. We need, to, we need to understand it's not just the weight loss, we need to care all aspects. Your esophagus is important, the acid could, could not be in the, in the esophagus and less the belly. So we need to, to do the best procedure for you both it will be fine for the weight loss, 
but we need to 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 care to the um, uh, extra disease aspects. We can't give you an uh, other issue uh, doing this kind of surgery. We need to care that part. So, but the best it's now the mini because it's a little more malabsorptive, but both are good. Both are good. It depends on the patient. Okay, building a switch is for a specific patients. Uh, need to be very, very patient with um, the expectations about the change or your your, your life, it will be changed a lot with this surgery. You need to be conscient and be very, very uh, disciplined, extra disciplined for this, for this kind of surgery. You need to check you every three months, maybe every six months or three months, it will be necessary for check your iron, your all your uh, vitamins and protein in your body, because this is a more malabsorptive surgery than the others surgeries. And it's very, very important to check in and check in your levels of the hemoglobin, your B12, your calcium, everything with this kind of surgery. It's a, a more, Malabsorptive, of course, is a little more good results in the way loss, but need to be in very, very disciplined patients to get this surgery and take strictly your vitamins, your protein, and checking you with the doctor um, all the time for, uh, for all your life. So I like the surgery, but it's an a specific patients to uh be clear you need to change a lot and, and you need to be very disciplined with this surgery so um well we have all the standards like us uh, uh, i saw a, a question here i don't know if my answer it will be correct for for the for the questions, but it's 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 saying if we are doing um, the 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 procedure, uh, we are follow uh, recommendation for U.S. or Mexico. I I I like to explain this because we are in Tijuana. We are the most uh, city in the world doing bariatric surgery, and we are the first one who start with this. So we put in the, in the World Congress uh, the protocols who need to follow up all the rest of the world because we have more experience than others um, countries, even US. Uh, we are having the most experience in all like I can say in all world here in, in Mexico and Tijuana specific because we are um, having the most number of the patients day by day. So we have the same uh, follow-up rules, uh, protocols, everything like the rest of the world. And they are asking us what we are doing with the patients because of course we have more experience in more cases, more patients and more patients. And the results stuck uh, by itself. We have the low rate uh, complication in the world, and uh, we have the, the experience. In, and yes, we we teach for the rest of the. Actually, we are right now the most um, um, uh, teaching uh, place. To, to, to teach, uh, we are having four different places uh, to teach uh, the other surgeons. And the US surgeons are coming, the Brazil, Brazilians, 
are coming here in all all part of the the world are coming here to learn to do and and, and, and learn from us so don't worry about that actually we are uh, having most most experience in other countries so if, if you if you want we can uh, start the 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 questions wrong yeah okay let me touch base on this because this is going to be another questions everyone um wonder about so you know we want you to wear mask at all time uh, during your travel when you get there of course um we do again want to do social distancing um we do not require any PCR test results or any at-home test results, but we highly recommend you do that. Uh, maybe just the simple at-home when you, right before you take off for yourself and if you bring a companion, um, we, don't, we do not require vaccination, but a, of course the vaccination is a great thing to have. So that's just a requirement, but also our recommendations. Maybe you want to touch base on this, Dr. Valenzuela, because that's another question everyone asks. When can I go back to work? When can I do exercise? When can I lift heavy weight and uh, like or swimming? So if you want to kind of generalize, like what would be a good recovery time for doing different things, that would be great. Um, well, um, this is a perfect, um, uh, double to, to say, uh, the first day after surgery, uh, we are pushing to walk. Okay. So the first day you need to stand up, walk and start your exercise breathing. So imagine if you can walk the first day, what you can do at week. I am not talking about running or lifting heavy things, but uh, we have a lot of patients who work with us, uh, nurses, doctors, uh, who can, we can see what happened after surgery, who is working at one and a half week. It's a, uh, no heavy works, but it's walking, moving without problem. So my recommendation is two weeks for gastric sleep and desk job or, you know, no heavy works. That is very, very perfect. And if you need to lift and heavy things or do a little more heavy walking in your work, maybe three weeks. But for lifting, it's, uh, you need to wait six weeks for lifting, for workout, uh, swimming, but you can go to pool when you have the ones dry. If are dry and you are seeing it's very, very close and dry, you can go to the pool. Not to swimming, just walking, uh, you know, low impact. Uh, in the in the pool and it's the same to walk we recommend to walk 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 every day after surgery of course one block it's good and then you will increase two weeks maybe two well two blocks but for heavy workouts lifting heavy things you need to wait six weeks six weeks for do all that kind of heavy heavy uh, exercise but to work to work maybe this job is one a week enough one and a half uh, my recommendation my for to to get this uh pause and and reorder all your in your mind and, and plan all your your meals it's two weeks two weeks i think is the perfect time to 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 come back to work or your activities, okay?
Okay, before we go to question and answers, I'd like to touch base as well on our financing options. We do work with several companies. One that has been very successful is Supermoney. These links are all on our page, financing page on our website. And it comes through the email when you, when you sign up. So you can do any of these options. United Medical Credit as well is a, is a great option. Medicard is a Canadian partner we have that do, does financing. Of course, you know, you can, well, super money is kind of like a combination of all SoFi and lending tree and all those, but you can specifically go to each one of these and apply for personal loan or medical loan. One thing we recommend that you don't do is to apply for so many at one time, maybe one or two, because when you apply for more than one or two, it, it hits your credit rec uh, score and that's not a good thing. Okay, so uh, we're just opening up uh, to question and answers. I'm gonna try to, um, um, maybe this is a good one to start because we've been talking about it. If you are diabetic, what would be the best, best option, sleeve or bypass? Uh, your expectatives are important to us. If you are having um, uh, resistance to get the bypass because you, you are a little more you know, uncomfortable with uh, this malab sort of procedure, we need to see what, how is, how much is your BMI, how how much is your uh, levels of glucose, and maybe you can get a sleep surgery because the sleep surgery works for the diabetes too. But if you are uh, 40, 45 BMI or more, 40 BMI, and you are having a uh, high, very high glucose um, rates, uh, I would recommend more the bypass. The bypass is a very good option for, for your case. And, uh, you know, we need to, to, um, to know how is your BMI. If you send to me, I am 35 BMI and my glucose is, uh, not too much up and it's starting with diabetes, well, sleep surgery is a very good option. But if you are a little more uh, BMI, and like I said, well, the, the best procedure is the bypass, the full bypass, okay? They're asking, um, why can't you eat sugar after the surgery? I noticed a lot of people have the, you know, take sugar-free stuff or they're very strict on sugar? Sugar-free um, substitutes or uh, what is the, the, the answer? Sugar-free, yeah. They're, they're saying, I see a lot of patients, they just use sugar-free stuff. Why is it that they can't have sugar after surgery? Well, it's not you can't. You, you should change your habits. It's better if your brain is not used to take sugar every day in a lot of meals because the brain wants to get more and more and more sugar, even the substitutes. You need to uh, try to avoid the sugar in your meals. Of course, the, the natural sugar is necessary, the fruit, uh, the carbs, it's necessary for everyone. It's not with, for complete, but uh, if you take sugar, it's better if you take the substitute or sugar free, because we don't want you are eating sugar, 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 if, even without bariatric. And if you are taking meals 
with a lot of sugars, with a lot of fatty, fat uh, meals, you will have maybe problems with um, uh, dumping, who is uh, when your intestine take the sugar very fast and they are not ready to receive that kind of sugar and it's working more fast and you have a big and fast uh, response to get diarrhea because the small bowel is crazy and don't know what to do and just run fast and, and your levels of glucose after that is low down and you can have this uh, variation in your sugar very fast and very uh, intense and you can have a this dumping syndrome who so is uh, very sh fast and, ch and aggressive change in your in your body and you can have a uh, dizzy or this bloating abdomen with diarrhea explosive and you know very very uncomfortable uh, response from your body. So you need to care all your meals after surgery, even in the sleep surgery, even in bypass, it's the same. You can have these problems if you take a lot of sugar. And we recommend, of course, to take your the fruit, sugar, and the substitute of the, of the glucose from the, this uh, substitute glucose. Yeah. OK, there are. Um... I see a lot of the questions is what 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 do I do if I have complications going back home? What is the process? What do I do when I go back home? So so I think the the issue is we have short-term complication and a long-term complications. Short-term complication usually happens when you are down there in Mexico, which you are under observation. However, if you came to US and you had problem, which is um, is very, very rare that we recommend, depends on the, you know, of course, for example, if your incision is irritated is one thing, but if you feel like something is happening internal, you definitely need to go to the to the emergency room. One of the uh, recommendations we have is for medical tourism insurance. We offer it through a third party, again, company, and we have a link on our website and we send a link when we send you all the documentation. You can buy, I believe it's $430, which covers long-term, short-term complications, your travel, if, you, uh, if your luggage gets lost, all the stuff that is travel-related is all uh, covered. So that's another way to, uh, just for, peace of mind, you can you can do that. Um, when you go back, um, we just basically like gastric sleeve or bypass, we just ask you to do a pre-op, I mean, uh, just a blood test to make sure your vitamins, everything checks every, maybe the first three months. And then after that, maybe just a yearly checkup. As far as being rejected when you're down there, so the our H, HQ is pretty uh, comprehensive and basically surgeons reviews all the information you put in as long as everything is complete, they review everything. Of course, they check you out when you're down there, but another recommendation we do is um, do a blood test, especially for people who are going through revision because um, people with the bypass, previous bypass or sleeve have a tendency to have low iron or hemoglobin levels. So that uh, makes sure that when you go down there, all your vitals are checked. Of course, you know, we do our own tests when you're down there, but this is just for you to know if you are in good shape. Of course, if you have 
any um, condition as far as heart condition or anything like that that you put in the HQ, they would ask you if it's needed to do a, a stress test or things like that. So, so it's very rare that somebody goes down there and we reject. Of course, if you uh, if you if they are in the surgery and they find out something wrong with that something that it's hard to to know previous to the surgery and um, you know there are there has been times you know uh, maybe one in a thousand or a few thousand that they maybe have a tumor in their stomach or somewhere so these are the things that does happen and can happen when you're down there. Uh, we require the deposit at the beginning when we schedule you. However, the rest is the balance is due two weeks prior to the surgery. If you're taking a cashier check, you can take it with you, but we need to know the type of the payment and how you're going to pay two weeks prior to the surgery. And remember, the more streamline your financing, your test, everything, your paperwork is, the sooner you do that, the less the stress is on you and our, our staff. When you get down there, we want to pay attention to your health and your well-being and what we have to do as a, um, you know, what we have to do to take care of you, your, your you know, medically. We don't want to worry about, oh, is your payment not gone through and stuff like that. So that's something you want to do uh, before surgery. You get down there. Um, another question is, for like somebody asking, if I vape, do I have to quit? Of course, the smoking, we recommend at least 30 days. You know, again, the better job you do on the pre-op is going to help you with the surgery and the recovery. But if if they vape, do they have to quit, Dr. Venezuela? Yes, the vape is, is uh, aggressive for the lungs. And actually, uh, the, all the results in a lot of patients who are vaping, it's a little more aggressive faster than smoking tobacco. So you need to quit the bait too. Yeah. And to extend a little more the, the, the question about the, uh, the cares and the complications immediately and long-term, uh, you, you can be sure I am always with the patients. The patients need to, to be very, very fine to leave the, leave the hospital. And if you are having a hard time at, at home, you are always in touch with me. And I am always resolving all the questions. In cases I send to the doctors, the video, my recommendations, and uh, sometimes the patients are a little more inflammated after surgery and they are scary about that because they are can eating at the same rate of the other patients is normal and it's normal to be scared. And I always um, uh, given the options to um, follow up a little more slowly the diet and, and different options and different situations. Uh, actually, I, a lot of patients says, I went to OR, uh, to ER and they say CT scan, they say all the lab tests and they say, I am good but they are can, uh, eating enough like they want to, to eat, it's normal. Some patients are a little more slowly to uh, disinflammate and other a little more fast. And it's, it's always uh, the most of the patients uh, a little scary about if they can have uh, problems or complications, but at the end they are good and they are in touch with me in some cases, I send the video. I took video for every one patient to be sure I can see the video again and uh, send to the doctor in case they need it uh, to, to show everything was good in surgery. So uh, 
I am always with the patients. I don't just do the surgery and left the patient now. If you need anything, you can to be sure you, I am going to be in touch with you. Okay, uh, another thing is uh, we have to explain, I forgot to mention is, so we like you to arrive to San Diego International Airport prior to, before noon, that's ideal because we can pick you up on time and take you to our uh, centers for doing the pre-op pre tests. And it gives us enough time to do all the pre-op tests the day before surgery. We also ask you to, for your departure, you arrange uh, after 2 p.m., 1 or 2 p.m., that gives us enough time to get you across the border. And if you have, let's say, if you're trout, if you are flying, gives you two hours at least ahead of your flight. Um, uh, let's see. They're asking, do all patients get get the same size bougie and what size do you actually use? Uh, the, the bougie is always a, a team. Uh, uh, it's um, 34 French uh, is the size of the bougie. That's it. That is the ideal size, but the French is a mixture who is 0.3 millimeters, so it's nothing. It's less than one millimeter. So imagine the difference between 32, 34, 36 is nothing. But 50 French, it's a little uh, significant difference between 34. So don't worry if the doctor says 32, 34, 36, it's the same. But we are using 34, is the ideal measure. So it's for everyone. We don't uh, take the measures, depends of your BMI or nothing. No. The same for everyone is the correct technique, is the unique technique, is the, it's not a different uh, for a, a different BMI or different patients. The technique is the same for everyone. And we are talking about portions, not sizes. We are uh, taking up your 80% of your stomach. It's different than other shorter people or taller people, but it's the person who is important. Now, if I know there are time to time, um, there are flight delays or cancellations. Um, you know, we pretty much work around um, cancellations or delays. So one way or the other, we managed to get you down there. Um, so no worries. Um, oh, something about additional fees. So the, the standard package I mentioned, what covers? Basically, the, let's say the medication. Medication, it covers for a standard type of patients. Now, if for some reason you need maybe more pain medication or more nausea medication, there's just going to be extra fees for that. As far as the surgery additional fees, um, let's say if Dr. V finds um, hernia repair needed during the surgery, which is, um, you know, another reason for you to be successful because you won't have reflux. One of the reasons you have reflux, it could be that coming from your hernia. So, but Dr. Valenzuela is going to fix that if it's needed during the surgery. And then we just charge you for the hernia repair extra. So these are the things that can have additional fees when you're down there. But um, it's not like, um, very expensive, but it can happen. And um, if you have a revision, our revision fee includes 
the endoscopic if it's needed. Um, they're talking about drinking 30 minutes before eating and 30 minutes after to avoid gastric dumping. Um, so yeah, I mean, Dr. V can explain that too, but the, the patient should drink 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after, not within well, those time. That is not directly with the dumping syndrome. Yes. The, 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 the liquids, it's more to avoid the stretch stomach and permit you eat solid food enough. Uh, and the most important solid food is the protein and the protein always is more heavy for the stomach. You know, meat, fish, um, chicken, uh, cheese, any kind of protein food, it need to need more space in your stomach. If you add the liquid at the same time, you won't have the enough uh, solid and protein food to get the nutrition enough every time you eat and you will have hungry more fast and fast and fast. So you need to be disciplined in that aspect because if you take liquids and you try to eat at the same time, you won't eat enough protein to get enough nutrition into your body and you will stretch a little bit your stomach. And at the end, it, it's a vicious circle and you will increase your capacity of your stomach in a short time, then it will be normal and regular like the other patients. And at the end, you will have the opportunity to eat a little more food, more calories, and your tool, it will be less effective because you don't follow up the rules. So it's not the syndrome syndrome uh, of the dumping syndrome. It's more for your, uh, maintain your weight loss and your tool more uh, active and, and working more if you follow up this rule and just eat solid food and before and after uh, 30 minutes, you can take liquids to don't miss that. Okay, perfect. So um, I think we pretty much covered all the questions. Sorry if you missed one or two, but we tried to cover everything. We also have a time that we promised to be one and a half hours. We're almost there. L last but not least, uh, I want to, to mention use Emerge Bariatrics vitamin that comes in the soft chew and chewable, drinkable or capsules. Um, you know, what we call the honeymoon period, the first two years or first year and two, you all lose weight and everything is going smooth. But remember for a long-term success, you know, you don't want to have um, bone loss or nerve damage down the road, maybe eight years to 10 years down the road. So for, for bariatric patients, especially, well, the, the uh, bypass and uh, DS patients definitely need to take nutritional supplement for the rest of their lives. Um, however, for sleep, even for sleep, we recommend that for at least the first two years and what happens with emerged bariatric vitamins is that you get specific amount of vitamins you need as a post-bariatric patient. It's not something you pick up from the um, Walmart or Target that is off the shelf and is for a general pub, uh, public. This is something was made according to the ASMBS with high quality ingredient the specification for, for, for bariatric patients. Okay, so uh, I got all the names who qualified, which means they did the health questionnaire. And, um, and then one more thing I need to mention, that was a question I forgot to, to touch, on, touch base on. So this 
raffle, it's good for Dr. V. So if Dr. V doesn't perform a certain procedure and you have, you have been approved with a different surgeon, you're not going to be able to take advantage of this raffle. So this is only for patients who qualify to get surgery with Dr. V and have filled out the health questionnaire and participated in our webinar all the way to the end. So I am going to mix all this up and pick a name. And I'm going to um, show it here. So let me read it. It's Catherine Brown. Let me see if um, I can let that individual talk. If I've, yep, right here, I'm going to let Catherine Brown to talk to us. Hello. Sure. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, you want to share um, Congrats. your information with us? Like my story? Yes. Sure. So I'm 33 years old. I have a seven year old daughter. When I was pregnant with her, I had hyperemesis garbidarium. So I had some medical complications with my body. Um, my, my body at that point, after nine months of not really eating and drinking, after I birthed my baby, I felt perfectly fine. I was able to eat again. So I liked to eat food. So I gained a high amount of weight after my pregnancy while I breastfed her for the year, which was very uncommon because usually breastfeeding helps you lose weight. Um, I reached about 300 pounds before I realized that there was a problem because I still saw myself as a new mom in recovery. So I started a low carb diet journey. And so for the last year, I have battled to lose the weight. I've gotten down to about 180 pounds and then I'll think, oh, I feel great. I go hiking, I go on walks, I use my treadmill. Okay, I can start incorporating carbohydrates into my diet. And very rapidly, I'll gain about 30 to 40 pounds back because my body thinks I'm still that same person. So I struggle going back and forth with the weight. And now I've struggled with deciding if I want to do a gastric bypass to be a healthier mom and be better for myself or if I just want to do a tummy tuck and I think doing a gastric bypass for me would just be a better journey for me because it would be something that I could just stably keep that weight off and incorporate it into the journey of my new lifestyle that I've been on um, but then still be able to you know maybe have some other foods that don't trigger me to gain back that weight right away. Yes, um, often we run into this uh, situation when patients think that liposuction or tummy tuck is going to take care of the obesity because what happens is the fat is around the organs, not right on the, the skins. And when you do lipo, they can only take so much fat out, but they can't get the fat uh, out of around your organs. So we, when we do plastics, actually, we do have a BMI cutoff of 30 to 33. However, we see that often in the US that they really don't care so much. And um, if you ask for lipo, they still give you lipo, whether you're qualified for or not. But I think when you're young and go through this uh, procedure, the weight loss surgery procedure, you are doing the right thing to assure you know you have the right tools to to live a healthy life or you know and then prolong your life and not only prolong your life make your life quality better so we thank you for sharing your story um you, you know call uh who's your coordinator do you know i think rita okay okay so rena probably uh, is the name we will have her contact you 
and make sure you get uh, on the calendar. Okay, thanks so much for attending. Thanks everybody for attending. We see you in our next webinar. We appreciate Dr. V. Thank you so much for putting time and uh, being with us. We see you soon. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, thank you.